Hey everybody, thank you for coming back to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace and this is Dr. Ian O'Neill, astrophysicist. This week we're talking about black holes. This is episode four of five on black holes. First of all, they're amazing. It's getting kind of weird as well. Come it's on. getting really weird. Yeah. But today we're talking a little bit about kind of more exotic stuff, like black holes, psh, got it, down. Now we're like, let's talk about white holes. Let's talk about wormholes. Let's what? talk about other kinds of crazy stuff that might exist out there in the universe. So in science fiction, pretty much all depictions of these things are wrong on some level, right? Like wormholes, wrong. Yeah. All wrong, all bad. Yeah, I'd Black say... holes, mm, probably mostly not great, but we don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the interstellar one was good. Okay, but well, hey, that's but, good. Uh, but no, but the wormhole was horribly wrong. So, you oh. know, they got some things right, some things not so right. Got it. Yeah. So, I want to know, Ian, where the heck did these supermassive black holes come from? Like, I get black holes that are, you know, normal sized and maybe they like slowly get bigger. Is that where like a supermassive black hole comes from or do they like pop into existence and they're just huge? Well, there's three main theories, well, there's two main theories and then some other, you know, not so main theories. Got it. But two of the main theories are early in the universe, there was a lot of stuff. So in the center of galaxies, there was a lot of mass, so there was a lot of gas clouds. And so these massive gas clouds just kind of collapsed under their mutual gravity and just directly formed a massive black hole. It didn't have to produce a star because it was just too massive. It just crunched in, produced these massive, massive black holes, these supermassive black holes, like hundreds of millions to even billions of solar masses. So that's, that's one way. That's a lot. Um, also, very early in the universe, there were you know, bigger stars. The first generation stars, <laughs> they were um, they had very short lives. They we'll make they, them like we used to. Huh? Yeah, well, they yeah. lived fast, died young, they had a good time, but they were really massive. Awesome. So these things are like nothing we'd ever experienced in our modern universe. They only existed back then. Yeah. And so these massive stars could have rapidly burnt out, collapsed into really big black holes and then pulled in a lot of mass with them, perhaps bulking up very quickly to produce these supermassive black holes, perhaps in the first billion years of the universe. Yeah. There's also the idea that Perhaps I mean this is like really out there when we're talking about. Uh, so those theoretical two are physics. like the like that's the, more mainstream. The acceptable. Oh, those are the mainstream. That's Tell more me mainstream. the hipster theory. I want to know the hipster theory. <laughs> the hipster then. theory is a good yeah. one. So um, we live in a universe with a big bang. We're pretty sure it was a big bang. There's right. a lot of debate about you know whether, whether it was. We've got big bang the cosmic or something microwave or background yeah. radiation. We can see the universe accelerating, and we can exactly. see the expansion is is pretty much we've got it. Yeah, we got it down. Yeah. Um, there is this idea that perhaps we live in a cyclical universe. The, the evidence at the moment is suggesting we don't live in a cyclical universe. Perhaps our universe is actually accelerating all the time. So basically there's this dark energy which is propelling everything against gravity. Got it. And it's all going to be opening forever. So basically we live in an open universe. But when you say cycle, you mean like there's a big bang and then, and then like a, a big, big crunch. A, oh, I was going to say big bust. This is uh, probably crunch <laughs> is big, better. Big bust works Better well. than that. But so, and then everything kind of falls back into a single point and then yeah. explodes again and then falls back into a single point exactly. and explodes again. That, see, that makes sense to me, but you're saying the evidence doesn't play out there? Um, no, not really. I mean, at the moment, if you look at all the galaxies speeding away from us, they're actually accelerating. So oh. it's like, oh, well, we're in for a massive mm. heat death of, of the universe, which kind of sucks. And I'll talk about that. But a how bit after. then, where, where does supermassive black holes fit in the big crunch? So one of the hipster theories is that perhaps these black holes can survive the big crunch and then reemerge in the big bang. So actually these supermassive black holes somehow are like made so it big through they don't the, get destroyed by the big crunch. Or perhaps they're actually generated by the big bang or they made it through this barrier this big crunch big bang back cap barrier. I don't think that's widely ac accepted but it's kind of but, a cool idea. Yeah, to it's think a neat it. idea. Stuff squeezing yeah. through the big bang. That's cool. cool. That's super cool. Mm. So what happens to black holes as they kind of go forward, right? Like we we know Black holes are a thing. We know that even though we haven't directly observed them yet, we indirectly observed them, right. and we know a lot about the physics that would possibly be around them. Mm -hmm. But do they just exist forever then? Like if if the hipster theories are true there, and that they've been around for a long time, and they might continue to exist even post a cycle of some kind, do they ever just disappear, die? I've got a sad story. It's a boring story as well, sadly, because if we live in an accelerating universe and it's just going to keep on expanding forever, we're going to suffer a heat death. Oh. And this is one of the theories of how, how the universe is going to end. It's just going to go for an eternity without 
crunching or anything. It's just going to gradually die. All the stars will fizzle out. They will be too far apart, and their heat will just dissipate into nothingness. Exactly, and and they'll fall into black holes. There'll be these huge black holes for a while, but then they'll start evaporating because of Hawking radiation. So Hawking radiation makes sure that there is a sell-by date on on black holes. They're not they're not eternal. So eventually they will fizzle out of existence, and they will get very very small, and they'll just pop. And in fact, there is um, there's there's some theories that perhaps we can even detect the earliest black holes primordial black holes around the time of the big bang that have actually gone through this process they're floating around in space by themselves gradually evaporating not sucking in any matter to gain mass and they're actually going to fizzle out of existence and when they get to a certain size they unravel and pop and they may generate some kind of radiation that we might be able to detect cool um but in the long term for our universe, basically all these black holes are going to phase out of existence and there's just going to be a lot of red shifted energy floating around with no matter. It's huh. just going to be It just slowly left. will kind of be further and further apart until it's just energy yeah. flying through. All digested by black holes oh, and all that's going to be left is terrible. just the radiation left so over. Sad. Yeah, I'd much rather have the big crunch. Yeah, the big crunch would be awesome. That but awesome. all evidence suggests at the moment that that's not going to happen, sadly. Oh, man. So... When it comes to stuff like this, and it comes to what we do know and what we don't know, mm. uh, mathematically speaking, there's a lot of stuff surrounding kind of black hole physics mm-hmm. that has mathematical proof, even though we don't have evidence of it, like wormholes. Wormholes, yeah. which you might recognize if you've ever watched almost any space sci-fi ever. All of them, I think. Isn't yeah, it? pretty much. Like, I mean, I used to watch Deep Space Nine. I know all about wormholes, yep. right? It's also known as Einstein Rosen Bridges for the bougier uh, physicists impressive, out there. Impressive. But uh, an Einstein Rosen Bridge or a wormhole is essentially just a hole between one point in space and another point in space. Yeah. Correct? Yeah, so and it's a direct um, consequence of Einstein's general relativity. So from the equations, we've got these little passages through space and time. So in other words, these little passages, these little wormholes, could connect two places in space and two places in time. So theoretically, you could go back in time, forward in time, or even appear on the other side of the universe as like... Just um, with this like Star tunnel Trek through suggest. space time, right. Yeah. But they've been predicted by math, guys, mm-hmm. but they are not actually like we've never observed never one observed we've never detected no one evidence. of any kind mm-hmm. and uh, you know most of them even in the math it's not like you fly a spaceship in and it's like all cool and then you fly out yeah it's like they exist for a microsecond nano like they're just very so so small mm-hmm. amount of time and they're not even large enough for that they're maybe like 10 centimeters at their biggest and 33 centimeters you know like they're tiny little things well you could almost fit in it Almost. <laughs> it's like a golf ball. Yeah. Throw that in there and pops out in the delta quadrant or whatever. But uh, if we wanted to use them for anything, maybe information transfer, right? Mm-hmm. You could beam an email through a wormhole maybe or something like that, theoretically speaking. But, but not people. No, even that. I mean, they are so unstable that some theories even suggest that you'd be lucky if a f- one photon could get through. I mean, they just don't last that long. But And if you wanted to make a wormhole traversable, because there's no way in nature that a traversable wormhole... So basically, that's a traversable, wormhole... like I go through it. ...that you can go through it. So yeah, like the uh, the Deep Space Nine wormhole, that's traversable. Yeah. And it's natural, as far as we know. Was it natural? Yeah, I think it was, I natural. it was natural. I don't remember canon. Oh. oh, remind us in the comments, everyone. Yeah. Oh, I don't feel so geeky now. Oh, man, my geek just ran out. I just ran out of geek. Yeah, I don't remember. Oh, I don't well. remember. But, yeah, so um, whether it's man-made or not. but So they don't exist in nature. We know that much. The mathematics don't even support it. But if you were to make one, so say if we got so advanced that we were able to get one of these microscopic wormholes and just ram like some it out. exotic energy in there or ex- exotic matter, which has got some kind of anti-gravity property that can hold it open, Perhaps we could make it traversable. We could use it for something. It's, it's a stretch. This is that's stretch. you know something the ancients can do. We can't do that. Yeah. Stargate reference. Yeah, it's not those ancients. Uh, but there's also white holes, which are the opposite of a black hole, and these yeah. have, these really intrigue me. I really think this is cool. Yeah, it's cool. It is cool. I mean, uh, he sounds he sounds skeptical. The man sounds skeptical. Well, they're purely hypothetical. Okay. Again, I, I'd wonder. But then again, I suppose you know we got the Event Horizon Telescope coming up that can actually directly observe. Right. a black hole because I mean what can white holes actually do they just they're literally the opposite of a black hole so yeah. if black if everything falls into a black hole 
then a white hole is sort of like the opposite of that. Everything's kind of pushed away from this this point in time, where it's in space time. So th think of it like a like a faucet running into a sink. The ripple at the edge right. of that okay. is you know things are being pushed away. That's that's the white hole. And yeah, it's theoretical, but it's kind of neat. Yeah, and, and they work with general relativity. I mean, yeah, they're it was, it's one of the uh, it comes out of the equations again. I mean, like black holes did, and look at the, where we yeah, are now. Yeah, and with the Event Horizon Telescope, you could theoretically, uh, you know, if you put um, more and more um, observatories are attached them to the, the Event Horizon Telescope, or even perhaps have a space-based massive cool. uh, interferometer. Can you imagine that? Just throw some, throw some on the moon. Yeah, think yeah, how yeah. big that could get. That'd be awesome. Yeah, um, you could perhaps survey other black holes in other galaxies. Cool. And so, if you're surveying all these these black holes, say some of them are different, because theory suggests there's not going to be much of a difference observably of a black hole and a white hole. Interesting. Right, you would, they would both like they have look problems similar. with visible light. Yeah, like we wouldn't be able to see them regardless. Exactly. So, wouldn't it be interesting if you could survey, say, a hundred black holes, and a few of them look kind of different? Mm -hmm. Could Maybe they be white holes? Because holes, they're pushing instead of pulling. Yeah. It'd be hard to tell. That'd be interesting. Physicists are really good at doing math. I think that's the <laughs> lesson here. And, but they're not so great at showing how that math plays out in real life. They're like, well, mathematically, this could exist. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, like, that's about as far as it goes. The Event Horizon Telescope could be used to survey lots of different black holes, mm -hmm. lots of different white holes, and all sorts of other stuff. But have you ever heard of any of these things? Did we not talk about something that you wanted to know about? Tell us in the comments. And make sure you subscribe for more Test Tube Plus, because tomorrow we're going to talk about what black holes can be used for. Like, once we it's find gonna one. Good. It's going to be good. Once we find one, what can we do with it? Oh, uh, wouldn't you like to know? I would, which is why I'm coming back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching, everybody. You can come find us on Twitter. I'm at Trace Dominguez. He is at Astro Engine. You can ask us anything you want to know, and we'll see you tomorrow.